All right, hello and welcome. So here we are in this game here, Hogwarts Legacy. So I'm going to be testing this game for you guys in terms of the benchmarks here in the gameplay. So because this doesn't have an inbuilt game benchmark for us, we're going to take it slow here and try all of the different settings one by one. So we'll start first with just raw rasterization performance. Let's see how this game handles without any kind of help from Nvidia DLSS or Nvidia Magic. Let's turn TAA on. We'll leave the native resolution here to 100% scaling, no DLSS or upscaling right now. We'll leave NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on to boost. And uh, then we will turn on or leave the frame rate as uncapped, VSync is off, not playing in HDR mode and everything else, you know, the motion blur and the cinematic effects are on. If we go over to our graphics settings, we've got here everything cranked to ultra and we'll leave all the ray tracing stuff off for the moment. Let's see how this behaves with rasterization performance on the RTX 8060 in this Alienware M18 R1. So here we are, we're sitting at the you know, game world. So I've just run through a few of the earlier quests here so I can get up to this level. I've already completed a little bit further on my PS5, but I wanted to jump in here and start looking at some benchmarks in this game. So we're looking at about 120, uh, 135 watts. We're not getting anywhere near that 175 magic figure that I've seen in other games, a bit odd. But perhaps it could be because I'm taxing this GPU by using OBS and Source Record on two different sources. I've got a Camlink 4K that you're seeing me on here. And then I've got the window capture, or the desktop capture rather, that's using to capture this gameplay here. Running in windowed full screen mode, borderless window or windowed full screen, whatever it's called. And the frame rate is... The gameplay looks smooth, but we're in the high 40s maybe close to 50 at certain points not all that impressive no texture loading or pop in it looks absolutely stunning this game looks visually very very uh, appealing i mean it's something that i would really want to play i am a big fan of these open world games because i love to see how the creators have imagined a different world it's a fantasy world and definitely takes the whole escapism thing to the next level so we're running at about 61 degrees on the gpu not warm at all but only about 135 watts so that's uh not sure what to say there but let's jump in here and let's crank up some of these settings all right so we'll take this slow here so if we go into the settings the first thing we'll do is let's turn on deep learning anti-aliasing so this should give us a little bit of a kick because this will rely on the gpu for calculating this and because deep learning means it's helped out by artificial intelligence and machine learning we should have less taxing on the gpu hence it should push a little bit higher in power and a little bit better performance even if it's slightly yeah so we can see that right there just by turning that on we've gained another couple of frames maybe 54 55 oh all right natsai we're not going to leave you behind so yeah it looks like we're now hovering into the low 50 so very slight boost there by enabling dlaa that's deep learning anti-aliasing from nvidia our frame times are a lot higher than i would have generally expected we're seeing into the 20s and maybe even the 30s at certain points uh, certainly in the teens 48 49 fps a little bit kind of all over the place let's go in here and turn on some more of goodies so we'll go to settings let's go to our display Let's turn on DLSS here and see if that gives us a boost. So we'll turn on DLSS. Now there's a couple of different options here. If you turn off DLSS, the only thing you can do is turn on frame generation. So you get the frame insertion tech, which means you should double the frame rate effectively. But DLSS off means you're still running at the native resolution of the display. So you should still have very, very good visual, visual fidelity on the game. Let's try it with that first before we enable some scaling and see if that really helps us gain performance boost here. All right, so here we are and ooh, it's initial little bit of lag it's got to do some texture work i get processing i guess and uh, so with dlss and frame generation turned on we don't seem to have gained all that much performance oh no there we go yeah so hitting at around 68 70 fps now from around the high 40s to 50 so about a 25 to 30 percent boost there maybe a little bit more which is fairly acceptable i think that's okay it's not the end of the world but i'd really like to lock it above that 60 fps so even if our lows never fall below 60 f because that'll give us the best appearance in terms of the gameplay all right let's go in let's turn on some more goodies so we'll go to settings let's go here to power excuse me to our settings here 
Let's try putting DLSS on quality mode. So you can see here that it goes to 67% scaling. So that means we're rendering at a much lower resolution and then scaling up to the Quad HD Plus display resolution on this device. We'll leave the frame generation on. That's a very handy feature. We'll leave the uh, reflex low latency on and the frame rate here is uncapped. So let's see where we can hit with these settings turned on. Uh, hopefully in the 80s this time. Let's walk around a little bit. Let's roam in the game and see how we do. Okay, so right near 80. Yep, we're getting up 80 above 80 now. So that's very, very impressive. Considering we were 40-ish FPS with raw rasterization performance. And now with DLSS turned on, deep learning, anti-aliasing, and upscaling, which is the DLSS quality mode, lower resolution and then upscaling, we're getting nearly double, maybe 80, 75 to 80% boost in frame rates. That isn't insignificant, guys. You should be using this tech. And believe me, as machine learning, as AI gets you know more and more uh, intelligent, refined, it's going to get better and better to the point where this is just embedded tech in all of the new GPUs that you see. You don't even think about it. You don't think about turning it off or on. And it makes the game playable at pretty much any resolution, any device. You know, we're not far off from that day when we can just load up the game and run it. And you won't you won't notice visual fidelity uh, loss, especially on older devices or less power devices. So, you know, APUs, mega APU driven devices, which are irrespective of the platform, whether it's ARM or x86, that run at near triple, uh, triple digit frame rates on any game with these tech, with help from this tech it's going to be a new year and i think we're not far off from those times so yeah very much so 80 plus fps let's see what else we can turn on here to gain a little bit more of a kick for us so we've got dlss is turned on set to quality mode our frame generation is on reflex boost is on there uh, the only goodies we could turn on at this point is basically ray tracing but i think that should have a negative impact we should get a hit to our performance so we'll leave that on for the moment. We'll have to do that in a separate test because as soon as you turn this on, this game makes you restart. And I don't want to do that at the moment. So if I turn this stuff on and leave the ray tracing quality to ultra, I'm sure it'll tell me you need to restart the game. So we'll do that after a minute here. But let's jump in here and let's get a little bit more gameplay. Let's see how we're sitting with our frame rates here. 80. Our frame time seems to be a little bit lower now. So there we go. We're back into the single digits, into the teens. We're not and we're kind of still bouncing up to the 20s which is not ideal i'd like the frame rate frame times to be as low as possible which means we're mas we're maximally saturating the gpu and we're getting, it, we're getting the best output here so we'll stop at this moment uh, i will exit the game we'll return with ray tracing turned on and let's see what all of that visual goodness adds to or rather detracts from our frame rates here so 80 fps with dlss on uh, reflex and low latency boost turned on we're playing at a scaled resolution of 67% using DLSS quality mode. And we're basically getting as much help from the GPU as we can. We've already doubled our frame rate nearly from what we were with just raw rasterization performance. So pretty amazing tech here. But we're still sitting around 120, 125, 30 watts. Not sure where is the 175 watts here. Uh, but I will take a look and we'll be right back with the ray traced uh, experiment. Okay, so we, here we are now. We've rebooted with ray tracing enabled. So let's go in and take a look at our settings. We should now have ray tracing goodies turned on. So if we look back at our settings, we're on DLSS with quality mode. We are getting a scaled resolution that is upscaled for us. And we've got frame generation turned on. Reflex low latency is turned on. Frame rate is uncapped. VSync is off. And if we look at our graphical settings, everything is set to ultra. All of our ray tracing reflection, shadow, and ambient occlusion is on. And ray tracing quality is set to ultra. So we should get the best visual fidelity in this game at this point with these settings. Let's see a little bit of gameplay here and how it performs. So we're hovering right around 60 FPS right now. Our GPU is sitting at about 120 watts of power, not hitting that 175 watts. That's a significant amount of power to be missing. But do keep in mind that I'm also recording right now in the background with OBS with source record enabled. So that means I've got two different streams being captured. One, which is my cam link 4K for the video you're seeing of me overlay. And then I've also got here uh, another stream which is recording the actual gameplay. I tried it with the shadow play here. I just could not get my webcam, my cam link 4K to be detected by, uh, by shadow play and I gave up. I spent a few hours tweaking around, disabling different webcams, integrated cam, trying to get that thing to really pick up my camera here, but not. A few stutters there, dipped down into the low 50s. 
Uh, but otherwise, you know, the game fidelity looks pretty good. I am seeing a little bit of stutter here. I don't know why. It's not exactly 100% smooth. But the visual fidelity, fidelity looks excellent. The grass, the fixtures, there's no moving pixels anywhere. None of the stuff that was happening with the earlier versions of DLSS. So DLSS 3, impressive indeed. And I really like the results here. But if we look here, our GPU is not hitting that 175 watts. Again, it could be because of all of the gameplay. What I will do is I'll test this without any of this capture stuff enabled. And I'll add a pinned comment to this video here so you guys can see what the actual performance is like when you don't have any of that stuff enabled. Of course, if you're streaming, then you're going to have some overhead here with either Shadow Play or OBS in the background running. So this is a more realistic example, actually. So 120 watts, we're getting about 50-ish. FPS in this game with the hardware ray tracing enabled set to ultra quality basically there isn't a single setting that I could turn up anymore at this point so we're getting some pretty respectable frame rates here considering this is a quad HD plus resolution and just two years ago thinking to do this with a laptop GPU in almost impossible with any kind of 3080 Ti even in the laptops that we did there so this is definitely a step up in performance it's running pretty smoothly well just as I spoke, I was going to say that it's running pretty smoothly and then we got a pretty bad stutter there, dropped into about 38 FPS. All right, let's see if we can make it here to the village, go through a little bit of an action scene. We'll get a few minutes of gameplay in here. I'll shut up so you guys can listen to the gameplay and the ambient music. It's actually got very nice uh, soundtrack as well. So let's do a few minutes of gameplay here to round out this overview of performance on Hogwarts Legacy on the RTX 4080 in this Alienware M18 R1 for 2023 back after a decade or more. Can we run faster? No? I love these jumping mushrooms, they just look so cool. Oh, some weird texture popping happening there. So our VRAM looks like we're using nine and a half gigs. Oh no, that's 9300 megahertz. Sorry, I'm a little turned around with this cap frame X because I was having some issues with Afterburner and Reva Stats Tuner. I know this still relies on Reva Stats Tuner, but at least this way, I'm running cap frame X. It seems to be more configurable. I don't know what tool to use. Come on, lady, can you pick this up? Ah, oh, there we go. There we are. These materials will come in handy for crafting later. I hope there's a really deep crafting system. I spend way too much time on that stuff, especially with Skyrim. Oh my god, I spend way too much time crafting weapons and improving things. Uh, the other one was uh, Diablo 3. Those gems, man. Those things are crazy. They will just soak up your time like no tomorrow. Alright, so low 50s to mid 50s. Respectable. Not the smoothest, but we've got this crank to crazy levels, so... Oops, can't do that. So, we're running at 60 degrees on the GPU. That's nothing. Come on, crank up the power. 83 watts on that CPU. I need to figure out how to... I wonder if I can use throttle stop to limit that down to 35 to 45 watts one nice thing about the asus rogue strix g18 is they give you the ability within their control center which is called the armory crate to actually be able to go in and set limits on the power the pl1 and pl2 i may have to take a look at the bios here to see if uh, dell is providing that in their bios instead of in the alienware command center because that would definitely pin down the cpu so we can push that extra wattage to the gpu in this device as it is we're pushing 200 watts impressive nonetheless if you look at all the other system components we're well into 250 watts most likely all right hello kitty meow Ooh, butter beer is it non-alcoholic? Can I not run in this section? Oh, I hate it when they do that. Oh, now we're hitting some interesting frame rates. Dropping down into the 30... F it's a stutter fest, guys. 32 FPS, 38. Yeah, that's not acceptable. Oh, goodness. I gotta give it to Portkey Games. This looks stunning. 
Yes, yes, yes. I've read this before. Let's go. Come on. All right. Let me wander around. We'll probably end it here. I don't want to spend too much time with this section because it gets pretty lengthy. I do like the map, though. Getting some stuttery effects there as well. So the game looks good. But yeah, we are dropping and stuttering all over the place in this village. This is Hogsmeade, I believe. And is it Hogsmeade? Am I just making stuff up? Hogwarts. What is what is the name of this village? Three broomsticks. I, I think this is Hogsmeade. That's where Weasley sent us. Hogsmeade. Here we go. Up here on the right. Okay. All right. We'll stop it there. So I think this has been a pretty good look at uh, Hogwarts Legacy running on the RTX 4080 on the Salienware M18 R1 for 2023. We can see that we can get some fairly good performance, but I think this game still needs a little bit of tuning. And of course, you can you know, not turn on crazy amounts of uh, visual effects on this game like I have to really ruin the frame rate. I'm sure you could play at a lower or maybe a balanced, balanced setting on the DLSS mode, which will give you hopefully a little bit better and stable frame rates. But that's the reality of this game. So that's all. See you in the next one.